This is a continuation of the previous lecture on major literary critics in Sanskrit poetics and their works. In this lecture, we are going to see literary critics from the medieval phase. The first critic that we are going to see today is Hemachandra. Hemachandra was a Jain scholar who lived in the 12th century. It is believed that he lived in today's Gujarat. Other than his magnum opus Kavyanushasana, he has written many other works. His Siddha Hemachandra, Shabdanushasana, Linganushasana and Thadu Pariyaya are treatises on grammar. His Chandanushasana is a work on poetic meter. Apart from this, he has also written a few dictionaries namely Abhidana Chiddamani, Anegartha Samgraha, Nikhandu Shesha and Deshi Namamala. Hemachandra's Kavyanushasana primarily covers almost all the important aspects in the works of his predecessors such as Kavya Hedu or the result of poetry, Kavya Prayojana or the uses of poetry, Kavya Swarupa or the ontology of Kavya, Guna or poetic merit, Dosha or poetic blemish, Rasa or aesthetic emotion, Alankara or the figures of speech, Thwini or poetic suggestion etc. It is generally believed that Hemachandra's Kavyanushasana is very much modeled on Mamada's Kavya Prakasha. Ramachandra and Gunachandra are the disciples of Hemachandra. Gunachandra was a playwright as well. The duo is best known for their magnum opus Natya Darpana or The Mirror of Drama which gives the readers a good glimpse into the art of dramaturgy. Natya Darpana is divided into four chapters and each chapter is called a Darpana or Mirror. It is often believed that Natya Darpana is the first such text composed by a working playwright. In Natya Darpana, Ramachandra and Gunachandra see Rasa not just as a pleasurable experience but as a sorrowful experience as well. This can definitely be considered an innovative and novel approach to the very question of Rasa. We will discuss this aspect in detail when we discuss the idea of Rasa in the forthcoming lectures. It is generally believed that it was the influence of Jain philosophy which inspired them to see Rasa from a new angle altogether. It is significant that this important and innovative treatise on dramaturgy that they wrote is extant only in four manuscripts. Even more surprising is the fact that not a single commentary on it has been identified. One literary scholar upon, him, upon whom this text exerted a tremendous influence is Rudra Bhatta. As for the influence of other critics upon Ramachandra and Gunachandra, the impact of their guru Hemachandra is quite apparent, although they do not hesitate to criticize their preceptor on a variety of matters. The same is the case uh, uh, their approach to Abhinavagupta who they critique and appreciate at the same time. Another theoretician who had exercised a tremendous influence upon them is Mamada. It is very clear from the text that they had very thoroughly studied and understood Mamada's Kavya Prakasha. Vakphada lived in the 12th century. In the field of literary theory, he is best known for his work Vakphada Alangara. Nemi Nirmana is a Mahakavya he has authored. Like Hemachandra, Ramachandra and Gunachandra who, saw we, who we saw earlier, Vakphada was also a Jain. Vakphada's magnum opus Vakphada Alangara consists of five chapters and around 260 karigas. In this work, Vakphada has reflected systematically upon almost all the aspects related to Kavya Shastra except for the division of the Alankara named Rupaka or metaphor. All the example verses that Vakphada cites in his text to explicate his concepts are solely created by him. The first chapter of the text deals with the ontology of Kavya, the merits of reading and composing a Kavya and finally 
the purpose of composing a poem. In the second chapter, he classifies Kavya into different categories and explains poetic force. The third chapter is a very detailed engagement with the poetic merits. The two areas which the fourth chapter deals with include alankaras or figures of speech and riti or poetic style. The fourth chapter which deals with the alankaras consists of around 353 karikas. From this, it could be inferred that Vakphada gave a lot of importance to the idea of alankara or figures of speech. And finally, the fifth chapter deals with the ontology of rasa and its importance. There is one more Vakphada. This Vakphada lived in the 14th century and his major work is Kavyanushasana. Like the Vakphada Alangara of Vakphada 1, Kavyanushasana of Vakphada 2 also does not talk uh, in extenso about Rupaka. Vakphada 2 had also written a commentary on Kavyanushasana which is titled Alangara Tilaka. Remember, there are two Kavyanushasanas. One is written by Hemachandra and the other is written by Vakphada 2. Compared to Hemachandra's Kavyanushasana, Kavyanushasana of Vakphada 2 is a very small work. It consists of five chapters and covers almost all the topics related to Kavya Shastra. Other than Kavyanushasana, Vakphada 2 had written two other works, namely Rishabha Deva Charida and Chanda and Chandonushasana. Chandonushasana. Sharada Tanaya lived in the 13th century and he is best known for his work Bhava Prakasha. Bhava Prakasha primarily deals with Nati Shastra or Dramaturgy. More than an original treatise on Dramaturgy, Bhava Prakasha is primarily a textbook that collates information from other works. The chapters in Bhava Prakasha are titled Athikaranas. The first three Athikaranas deal with Bhavas. The fourth Athikarana or chapter deals with the manners of the heroes and heroines in the context of Shringara Rasas, Alambana Vibhava or the personal and human object which functions as the stimulant of aesthetic emotions. The first chapter deals with the different moods of the hero and his different emotional states according to different moods. The sixth chapter uh, is a very detailed deliberation of the different aspects of Shabda and Artha or sound and sense. The topic of the seventh chapter is ten kinds of dramatic performances such as Nataka, Prakarana, Pana, Prahasana, etc. The eighth chapter deals with different kinds of dances and the ninth chapter deals with the difference in the performance of different kinds of dramas. Jayadeva is another important critic who deserves a special mention. Jayadeva is also known as Piyushavarthana. Although he is best known for his work Chandra Loka, he has also authored a drama called uh, Prasanna Rakhava. A close comparison of Jayadeva's Chandra Loka and Appaya Dikshida's Kuvela Yananta will reveal that Dikshida had heavily borrowed either verbatim or with slight modifications, the verses that Jayadeva cites as the example of different Alankaras. This shows the importance of Jayadeva as a literary theoretician. Jayadeva is also known for Mamada's debate with him about the ontology of Kavya. In Kavya Prakasha, uh, Mamada criticizes Jayadeva for considering a piece of writing without an Alankara as a Kavya. Uh, Jayadeva's Chandra Loka is divided into 10 Mayukhas or chapters. The first chapter is titled Vagvijara and it deals uh, with Kavya Anushasana and the characteristics of a poem. The second chapter deals with poetic folds or doshas. The fourth chapter deals with lakshanas based on Samudriga Shastra. The fourth one is a detailed exploration of poetic merits or gunas. Shabda alangaras or ornaments of sound and artha alangaras or the ornaments of sense are the major topics covered under the fifth chapter. 
the primary focus of the sixth chapter is rasa or aesthetic emotion thwani or poetic suggestion and it is subdivisions and its subdivisions are covered in the seventh chapter the eighth ninth and tenth chapters respectively deal with guni bhuta vyangya kavya lakshana and abhida we will discuss these aspects in detail in our chapter on thwani vidyathara is known for his work ekavali he lived in south india in the 13th century the demonstrative shlokas that vidyathara cites in ekavali are in the form of chadu shlokas about a king named narasimha deva the chapters in vidyathara's ekavali are titled unmeshas there are eight unmeshas in ekavali the first unmesha deals with the ontology and the purpose of kavya the second one deals with topics such as vachaka or sentence lakshana or the indicator vyanjaga or the manifester abhida or the primary meaning lakshana or the secondary meaning and so on the third unmesha deals with thwani and its divisions the fourth one deals with the variety of kavya called guni bhuta vyangya kavya poetic merits and reethis are discussed in the fifth chapter the sixth chapter focuses on poetic blemishes the seventh chapter deals with shabdalangaras or the ornaments of sound and the fifth chapter deals with arthalangaras or the ornaments of sense vishwanatha is the son of the poet uh, chandrashekhara he lived in the 14th century uh, it is interesting to note that in his magnum opus sahitya darpana Vishwanatha talks about his grandfather Narayana Pandita uh, who in fact proposed the theory that there is only one rasa called adbhuta apart from sahitya darpana vishwanatha had authored many other works such as uh, raghava vilasa kuvalayashva charita prabhavadi parinaya chandrakala uh, narasimha kavya and kavya prakasha darpana Thanudatta was from Videha which is in today's northern Bihar he was the member of a highly learned Maithili Brahmin community and he was the son of a poet named Ganeshwara or Ganapati it is believed that he lived in the second half of the 15th century Thanudatta is the author of two crucial texts in the history of Sanskrit poetics namely Rasa Manjari and Rasa Tarangini Pollock opines that Thanudatta's Rasa Tarangini is the first extensive text dealing exclusively with the question of rasa. There are eight chapters in Rasa Tarangini, and these chapters are titled Taranginis or Waves. The first chapter of the text deals with Thai Bhava or the basic emotions. The second chapter deals with Vibhava. The third one with Anubhava. the fourth with uh, uh, satvika bhava the subjects of the fifth and the sixth chapters are respectively vyabhichari bhava and shringara rasa the seventh chapter deals with other rasas and the final eighth chapter focuses on three kinds of rasa generation with respect to stai bhava yes rasa manjari deals with topics such as the qualities of a hero and heroine the two stages of shringara rasa the 10 stages of uh, vipralambha shringara or the love in separation etc it is believed that other than rasa tarangini and rasa manjini manjari phanu had also authored a treatise on rhetoric called alankara tilaka kumara bhargaviya champu is a mixed prose verse work narrating the story of the deity kartikeya phanudatta had also written a kavya title Gita uh, Gita Gaurisham in ten sargas. This text is modeled on Jayadava's Gita Govinda. He is also believed to have composed an anthology of his own and his uh, father's poetry called uh, Rasa Parijata or the Heavenly Tree of Rasa. Several other works attributed to him have not survived yet.